Have you had that million dollar app idea, but not the programming skills to make it happen? Maybe the endless possibilities of coding spark your curiosity. By answering just one simple question, you'll already be well on your way to coding success and avoiding the mistakes of many others. Let's get into it. How to start coding today. At this very moment, the world is more reliant on programmers than at any other point in history. They're at the core of any tech business, are highly respected, paid exceptionally well, and can usually work from anywhere in the world. So why doesn't everyone get into software? Many dream of achieving it, but the technical challenges hold them back. This video addresses that challenge. No matter who you are, what your life looks like, you can become a coder. There is just one extremely important question that you need to answer. Your single answer will already separate you from thousands that are desperately trying to get started in tech, but are failing. You ready for it? It might surprise you. Which field of programming will you choose? We know it seems too simple, but let us explain. There are way too many coding students attempting to learn every programming language they come across, most of which will not help them when interviews roll around. By identifying your goal now, you are narrowing in on what content you need to learn, saving countless hours of time wasted on unnecessary skills. We're here to give you everything you need to make this decision, from the most popular careers into tech to how you actually get started. Let's dive in. We'll start off with the single most popular programming niche, web development. These developers design and deploy websites and pages for companies, organizations, basically anything or anyone who needs a website. Self-taught coders and entrepreneurs typically gravitate to this field because it can be applied to many business strategies and is relatively easy to comprehend. While there are countless technologies and languages available to create really attractive and immersive websites, there are three primary pillars of web development, HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. These respectively make up the backbone, content, and style of a website. They're a great place to start and perfectly fine tools for hobbyists, but those looking to start a career in tech will want to level up their game with libraries and frameworks. These offer a variety of tools like pre-written sets of code and cloud connections to make website development so much more elegant. Consider these the icing to take your website cake from edible to delicious. Now that we understand a bit of the basic framework, we can look at the three types of web developers, front-end, back-end, and full-stack web developers. Front-end developers are the aesthetic designers of a website, known to coders as the user interface. More simply, a front-end developer is concerned with how a website looks. You'll find them researching color profiles that complement the company's vision, aligning content so that it fits well on all devices, and generally ensuring everything is pleasing to look at. Technologies and frameworks like React.js, Vue.js, and AngularJS are some really popular languages to learn if you want to become a strong front-end developer. On the flip side, or rather the back side, we have back-end developers. They are concerned with everything on the server side of the website. This includes managing and fetching data, initiating a payment gateway for online purchases, or sending your message to the correct recipient. Ever wonder how you get your Engineering Insiders videos suggested to your YouTube feed? Well, there is a classic back-end algorithm for you. If these concepts interest you, you'll want to familiarize yourself with Node.js and Django to start playing with back-end. But there's actually a third type of web developer, born only from the sacrifice of a front-end and back-end developer, a full-stack web developer. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sort of. A full-stack developer combines the two earlier professions into one taking the responsibilities of both a front-end and a back-end engineer. This extra level of skill comes with a much deserved increase in salary as well. But enough about web development. What other specialties are there to choose from? Well, we'll answer that question with another. Have you ever hastily typed an app idea into your notes right after you've been blessed with a million dollar idea? Or maybe you're just delusional, but hey, you gotta try it. Either way, we won't judge you. We're here to share how to get it in motion. First, you must pick. Android or iOS. Almost every smartphone on the market today runs on one of these two operating systems, and each has specific coding languages and practices. To help with this decision, you might be surprised to find out that the global ratio of iPhone to Android is roughly 1 to 5. It's true that you see iPhones everywhere in the States, but the global majority of phones are actually Android, and it isn't really a particularly close race. If you've decided that you want to develop apps for Android, well, great. You can take the help of either Java or Kotlin, the two most popular programming languages for Android. But if you've decided that you'd like to design iOS apps, you'll need Swift. 
The caveat for iOS is that you'll also need a MacBook to develop in Swift, which is a turnoff for many Windows users. But what if you don't want to make a choice? What if you want to design an app that will run on Androids and iPhones? Well, you don't actually have to program it in two different languages. All you need is a cross-platform language. The two most popular technologies that can do this are Flutter and React Native, both of which are equally efficient and helpful in our opinion. However, we'd like to add that this route does sacrifice operating system optimization and therefore have a lower professional ceiling than OS-specific apps. Making these apps and websites are perfectly fine careers, but now we'll cover a field that is absolutely steamrolling through the market right now. And it's all thanks to ChatGPT. The ability to generate intelligent programs is a very in-demand skill and can lend you some real high-paying jobs. Let's talk about it. Artificial intelligence and machine learning. You know, we hear a lot of people asking if there's a difference between machine learning and AI. Of course there is. The basic difference between AI and machine learning is the scope of their application. AI is a very broad umbrella term that refers to the coding practices that train a model to think independently. Machine learning is a subcategory of AI that uses vast amounts of data to predict the outcome of a situation based on past prompts and their outcomes. To get into machine learning and AI, you'll need darn good math skills to get off the ground. This can include statistics and probability theory to linear algebra and even calculus. For the actual coding, we highly recommend Python. Actually, we recommend Python to any programming beginner. We say this because if you can understand this video, you'll probably understand Python code. It's basically writing in plain English. It also has an impressive collection of libraries and online resources that make your life so much easier. Whew, you made it. You now know the three most popular software specialties in the field and are close to answering the all-powerful question that we presented in the beginning of the video. But we don't expect you to make this important decision without trying out some code. So, let's get you going. First off, you need a place to write and run all of your code. This place is known as an IDE, or Integrated Development Environment. We recommend Visual Studio Code. It's a simple download and extremely popular with everyone from the pros to average Joes. The download link and all the following resources can be found in the comments below. Now that you have something to run your code, you'll need a few coding structures, practices, and concepts to work with. If you don't already know, it's time to brush up on the basics. Variables, user interfacing, conditional statements, loops, and the syntax for your preferred languages. Beyond that, utilizing data structures and algorithms will help you program efficiently by minimizing your computing resources. This includes concepts like linked lists and stacks, and are usually intimidating the first time around. Don't worry, we've all been there. Remember to stay consistent and don't give in to the pesky stream of errors when they come. Oh, and they'll come. And when they do, you get to go bug hunting. Your IDEs have tons of tools for debugging that help find errors in your code. A simple example of debugging is putting stopping points in your program to make sure all of your variables are as expected. If your program counts from 1 to 10 and reaches negative 7,000 halfway through, then, you know, something is probably wrong. And once you get past your first few programs, you'll realize a need for version control and sharing code. You've probably heard of GitHub. It's by far the most popular program for this. The cool thing about GitHub is that it has repositories, or source code, of some of the most popular programs in the world. Take VLC Media Player or Mozilla Firefox, for example. You can actually download their source code and use your programming skills to take their products to new heights. And when successful, you can easily flaunt that ingenuity on your GitHub profile and resume. Now, you're cooking with fire. And now, it's finally time to give you all the best learning resources that regularly fast-track millions of coders towards tech success. Kicking it off with a banger, MIT and Stanford kindly offer up their world-class lectures for free on their YouTube channels for students all over the world. Getting to learn from the world's best professors without a hefty tuition fee? Sign me up! If that's not your style, there are also several websites like geeksforgeeks.com and codeforces.com that will help you sharpen all of your coding skills. Also, we invite you to the Engineering Insiders Discord. We've also linked our favorite language-specific coding books below for those tactile learners among us. Before we leave, a reminder that coding demands consistent practice. While starting may seem daunting, please don't forget that the world's most clever programmers went through the exact same coding learning curve when they started. You can do it. 
Now, if you learned anything in this video, we ask you to please like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps us to keep bringing quality content like this to all of you. Want to see what other engineering options there are? Well, check out this video to explore further.